Hello, welcome to Ensemblisms episode 6. I'd like to show you how to use the open source monitoring software Nagios uh, to monitor and report uh, service levels of your business services and operations in your inner systems ensemble productions. We'll do this through the use of a inner system supplied class called enslive.tcp status service. Okay, so let's take a look at the documentation for the inner system supplied class ENS Live TCP status service. Now this guy just binds itself to a port and when you connect to the port with either a programming language or like Netcat or Telnet, you can send it a command and it's going to send you something back. Um, all of these are read-only type values. Uh, the one that seems to be really interesting here is the config item status one where you send it the argument of a name of an item that's configured in production and it will return the status back. This is a very lightweight and supported way to get status information from your ensemble productions. Now you add the, the service to um, your production just like any other service. Here it is, the ENS Live TCP status service. I'm going to give it a service name here, uh, Nagios status service. I'll display it under Nagios and quickly finish this guy up. But it's basically just like any other service that you would um, configure for your productions through the web UI. I'm going to finish this up. I'll wait to enable it because I want to assign it a port and save that. And it should now be available in our production. So, and there it is. So there's the Nagio status service that we stood up. I'm going to go down here, give it a port. Let's give it, let's give it 9999. And we'll go ahead and save that guy and apply it. And now the status service should be open for business once we've enabled it and off we go. All right, here's, let's interact with it really quick. I'm gonna do a netcat localhost on port 9999. Let me see, let's feed it in production name. There's my production name as you can see, give me my version. That's, I'm running the 2010.2 field test uh, on this one here. Now I'm gonna check the config item status of that service that was enabled for us, that DICOM service earlier, which is the ensemble DICOM service. And you can see that it spits back, hey, the status is running. So that was pretty quick and a very simple way to get the status of that particular DICOM. Okay, this is necessary here to show you a Nagio setup on the back end, but I'll show you that I'm in three different directories. I'm on an Ubuntu system here running Nagios. Um, you can see here that there's, this is a plugin that I've written that interacts with that TCP service. I'm showing you where it's at on the file system. Um, this stuff here, Nagios installs kind of um, vary to operating system. But here is uh, a pretty agnostic plugin that will run on any system using Ruby. Uh, it, it's very simple. You could probably you know, do this in Cache itself if you wanted to. But uh, we like Ruby. Ruby's cool. But all it does here is you show that it's opening up a socket. Um, I'm putting the config item status of the argument that you supply it, and then I'm going to read in that response, and then do something with it. If the response is this, do that. If the response is this, do that. Now this is to spec to the Nagios plugin specifications on the exit codes and so forth that um, enable it to work. But this is just a quick look at the plugin itself that has to be installed on the on the target Nagios system. And I have made this available on GitHub and also on a Nagios Exchange. And it'll also be available in the show notes here. Secondary, we got to configure Nagios. Um, Nagios has a couple of steps that's file-driven and config files. The first one is we have to uh, we have to supply our command here. And if I go down, uh, you'll see the check command here. Basically, I'm calling uh, Ruby, uh, the interpreter. Um, then I'm calling my plugin, and I'm giving it three arguments. So that's kind of uh, Nagios speak for the command that will enumerate the status codes coming back. Um, that's that's one modification you have to make. So run step two. First you put in the plugin, two you specify the command. Now in Nagios 2 there is a config conf.d uh, directory that works kind of like Apache to where you put your different config files in there and they read them. Here is the simplest configuration for monitoring a um, ensemble inner system service and here you specify the host on top which is uh, ensemble running on my Mac and I uh, give it an IP address. And secondary here is the DICOM service. Now I did this service centric, so it will monitor one for one. And this is the ensemble DICOM service. So putting those three steps in, 
the plugin, the check command, and the config file, we can now restart Nagios and see what. All right, so here is Nagios fired up. And if you've never seen it before, it has these all these different views on the left side here. Here's the service view showing that our plugin is now working. And that's the Ensemble DICOM service is showing a config side. It's up, it's up and working there. So what we'll do here, uh, maybe we can catch it on its pull, but um, we're gonna go ahead and disable this while I show you the rest of the UI for Nagios. And that is now down. And hopefully we'll get a poll in here uh, very shortly that will um, show that service down. So here, here's how you go through. It shows the service state information. Uh, it has the last time it was checked. This You can do it at the host level. You know, you can put a group of hosts together. Uh, you know, Nagio speaks in hosts, host groups, services, and service group, which is kind of uh, important and very cool when you're trying to do SLAs for a group of like maybe HL7 listeners or, you know, DICOM nodes or something. But um, impervious to this is the, uh, uh, the reporting. Um, we're gonna hear, show you here the different types of SLA type reporting you can do. So the services, we're gonna select Ensemble. There, we're gonna go to the next one. This is kind of something you gotta remember is the assume state. Go down and let's go current state. And let's not do seven days. Let's go just today because this is just a demo. And we're gonna create the availability, availability report. So, yep, it's been up, you know, there is a, uh, it's been up 100%. It's not very, you know, it's not very interesting to look at, but when you leave it run for months on end, uh, you can always report this was up for this period of time and it's out of band of the ensemble box. So let's see if we can catch it polling. Um, as I go down, yeah, this is a, a group of all host groups. Um, it shows you can put your different hosts that uh, you interact with. And let's see if we have an exception here. There we go, there is the exception. Um, that we're showing that the Ensemble DICOM service is actually critical. Uh, the plugin at this time has now pulled it, read the config item status from the TCP service, and reported back that it's critical. You see that it's down right here, and that's about it. But the reporting is, is fantastic.